Well, we're here with a friend, Ron Geffner. He's a well-known lawyer uh, in the alternative investment space. For years, he's been doing that. And basically, what we want to bring you to all the Latin Americans, the guys in Miami, the guys that know what we're trying to put together from ilafin.com and from Wall Street Series, is the history of Ron. Ron been doing this for years, and at the end of the day, we, the Latins, want to know what Ron has to say for all that you did in the in the law side of all this, please, Ron. Thank mi, you. Mi vida, mi vida es muy bueno. You see that? He speaks Espanol. Sabo Espanol también. Oh, great. So I started my career working for the SEC, mm -hmm. where I focused on prosecuting money managers in the New York office. From there, I went to a large accounting firm where we did regulatory analysis for a whole host of asset managers. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, I started a law firm with two other gentlemen. What, what year was that? 1997. So 1997. That was years ago. Okay. We started it. There were three lawyers. I left my name off of the firm, which often results in people wondering why I left my name off of it since I founded it. And it was more, I didn't want people asking me if it was my father's law firm. Mm -hmm. I didn't want people asking me if we were only three lawyers. And then as I interviewed other lawyers who had fear mm -hmm. as their guidepost, saying that their name needed to be on the door to track business, it also gave me not only do as I say, but do as I do, that their name did not need to be on the letterhead to be successful at their career. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't a real limitation. And from there, we've started it. I've been very focused on what was- It was in the city in New York. Yes, we formed the business in New York City. Mm -hmm. The firm is only right now in New York City. Mm -hmm. We're about 30 lawyers. We represent over a thousand funds. Every database ranks us in the top five in the United States in representing hedge funds and private equity funds. And we deal with issues from people who come in with a way of investing assets uh -huh. and yielding a good return, and they want to know how to set up their business. Meaning, should it be in a fund? Should it be separately managed accounts? What are the regulatory requirements? What are the tax effects? What are the risks to them from a liability perspective? How do they deal with any business partners? How do they deal with any employees? And it's really guiding them on how often it may very well be for them. It's their first time running so the company. you're the hand-holding, basically. Yes, and it's practicing law is not just drafting documents. It's very much human interaction. And people seem to forget. It's, they lose their humanity, their approach to humanity. It's a service business. Hmm? What, what I sell is safety. I protect people, I give them comfort. And I help them make sense from chaos. From there is, as I told you, with this uh, audience, there is people at every single level. What do you think is the right suggestion you tell people that is initiating their career, as my son, who's, who's actually helping us film in this, that you met? It's important, Ron, because they need to understand that it's important to study, but it's, with you, it's very important that because you are a lawyer, so you kind of understand finance, from for the other standpoint, and people people tend to forget that it's super important to actually understand the 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 environment, the finance sector, so you can attend that. What is your the suggestion for that? One? So, in picking your career, and I have children. I have 23 year old twins, and I have a 19 year old daughter. And very few people in this world know what they want to be from a young age. Mm -hmm. There's some people that know they like a sport and they want to be the best at that sport. Mm -hmm. Whether it's being a veterinarian or a doctor or a teacher, there's a lot of careers that some people feel this connect connection to. It seems like the vast majority of people don't have that pull into a specific area. So I, I do it by virtue of looking at what other people do for a living, mm -hmm. look at how they live their lives, look at how emotionally they're affected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's important, the emotional, absolutely. So, by way of example, while I respect the police force, I don't think I'd want to be surrounded by certain life experiences that they have to deal with every day. Absolutely. It will, or would I want to work in an ER room? It's, thank God we have doctors that do, but sometimes I want to live in that ignorance. Wrong. So, looking at what I do is fascinating because we deal with people from all walks of life, people that started their careers from different parts of the world, 
different educational experiences, different socioeconomic backgrounds, and they have a fascination with however they make money whether it's buying stocks, whether it's investing in debt, mm -hmm. whether it's buying farms or technology or curing cancer or digital currency, it's never ending. Every day is a learning day. It's a learning day. And that's what I really enjoy. It doesn't get boring. And we deal with people. Learning the human condition is fascinating. When people act in an aberrated way, trying to assess what fear are they dealing with that's causing them to behave in this manner that doesn't make sense under the circumstances. It's not just about what we're doing, it's about something bigger. And when you can apply that, it's more empowering and it's more rewarding. Listen, Rom, one of the things that brought us together, I remember, is that in 2011, we were very active at the Hedge Fund Association. It's important for them to understand the power of networking and how actually translated into, in your case with your firm, potential new clients, but also the thought leadership the importance of being seen Ron Gefner taking the time to go into this kind of a nonprofit association as I did in Latin America. So tell them the importance of that. They, they, they tend to, to understand that, but they don't translate it oh, this overnight. And, and we understand that this is not an overnight success. No, this has been, <laughs> this has taken a lifetime. It's like having another child. So for everybody, how you spend your time and who you associate with, there are really three takeaways. As you were asking me the question, I thought mm -hmm. about it. First is the knowledge you develop. Having information is valuable. The second aspect is the relationships you develop with people mm -hmm. and having a history with them. As I walk through these events. Salt. Salt to me. You one see a lot of people. people. I've seen, I just had a meeting with somebody. I met her 20 years ago. There's so many people that are now my contemporaries that when we met, we were in our 20s. I try to say that to my children. The people you met in college, the people you meet in the first jobs, these become potentially the relationships you have for the next 20 plus years. Absolutely. But then the third thing, which often gets overlooked, and it's the most important part, is how do you feel about yourself? Mm -hmm. And so when you're doing these things and you're gaining knowledge, and you're developing relationships, and then you're also contributing yourself in a way that has greater meaning than just yourself, there's a positive feeling you take and how you feel about yourself i would think is the greatest variable that enhances your likelihood for success or failure you touch something very important and i've been all over that Ron, failure you know we are in a society where kids and probably having with your twins and your 19 year old daughter it's all about likes how many it's not like how many views how many followers? And when you and I grow up, this didn't happen, even though we have some social pressure. In terms of failure, they're gonna fail. Probably you and I have some setbacks down the road we've been overcoming that. What is your message about this failure and the never give up attitude? Because you are a legend on the law that you did it. But again, it's important for them to know from you. What do you, what do you think to tell them about failure, please? So, since there's a booth for Tony Robbins right next to us, I'll quote Tony Robbins because I um, had the fortune of going to one of his events for a few days. We can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we interpret it and how we react to it. Failure is an essential part of growth for all of us. And it, we've all failed and we will continue to fail. Absolutely. So what distinguishes one person from the next is how we react to those failures in our lives and whether you brush yourself off and you come back with greater tenacity or fight versus you view it as a sign of things to come and you call it a day. I do a lot of propaganda to our mutual friend Scaramucci, which his life has been all over the tabloids and he's a living legend of failures and bouncing back. From, I appreciate a, uh, the time you took with uh, Isla Finn and with the team that we're putting as I told you, all this together for the alternative investment space, we definitely want to invite you to uh, participate a little bit more in Latin America. Always my pleasure. And why don't you finish with some Spanish word to the audience? Buenos dias is one uh, well, we're one, I'll, I'll say it in English. We're all, every human being is related. So we're all in this together. And 
and we should all treat one another with respect. Absolutely. And I love the Latin community. Thank you very much, Ron. Appreciate My that. Pleasure. Okay. No, that's it. Got that.